Hey guys, welcome to another video brought to you by The Simple Engineer. Uh, today we are going to be looking at solving recurrence relation time complexities for big O notation. So we'll talk about what exactly recurrence relations are and then we'll look at a couple examples as to how we solve the time complexities. So let's first discuss what exactly recurrence relations are. Recurrence relations are simply equations that define a sequence of values. So the future terms in the equation are derived as a function of the previous terms. And what better example for what this means than looking at something like the Fibonacci sequence? So for those of you unfamiliar, we can look at the Fibonacci sequence. And the Fibonacci sequence is simply a series of values. So they start out as 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. And uh, if you don't already see the pattern, it's the sum of the two previous values is what the next value will be. So 2 is derived as 1 plus 1, and this would be n, and this would be n minus 1, and n minus 2. Let's go ahead and look at 13. 13 would be our n. And it's derived 8 and 5 is 13, so this would be our n minus 1 and our n minus 2. So ideally, we would come up with a function. We would say, you know, f of n equals f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. And this is what our Fibonacci sequence uh, equation would be. But the question is, uh, how complex is this function? How long does it take? What is the time complexity? A computer needs to understand. So we will dive into a couple examples. So let's first look at the Fibonacci sequence. So we'll go ahead and we'll say, okay, example one is going to be Fibonacci. So we know that we'll take some function t of n equals t of n minus 1 plus t of n minus 2. And we need to know our base cases. In common algorithms like divide and conquer algorithms or recursive strategies, you know that there's always a base case that causes the algorithm to terminate and then recurse up all the subproblems to give you the final solution. And the base cases in Fibonacci are essentially uh, t of 0 equals t of 1, which is just 1. So looking back at the previous, we know that this is the 0th index and this is the first index. They're both 1, and these are the base cases here. So with that being said, let's go ahead and um, break up our problem using the substitution method. There's a good computer scientist on YouTube known by John Bowers that solves problems very similar to this. And he likes to split his workspace up into two segments. We have a uh, workspace here, and we have a solution space here. So we know that for any k value equal to 1, we just have our original t of n equals t of n minus 1 plus t of n minus 2. But we need to substitute these n minus 1 values into the original to essentially come up with a um, recurring pattern, right? And since we have two recursive problems here, it can get a little bit tricky to solve. But that's why we consider upper bound in big O notation. And upper bound in this case would be the same thing as saying t of n is the same thing as 2t of n minus 1. And this is possible by making the assumption that t of n minus 1 is essentially the same as t of n minus 2. And this is obviously an upper bound because if we have some sequence of values, we have, say, n minus 3, n minus 2, n minus 1, n, we know that n is derived from the sum of the two previous terms. But if we're assuming that the two previous terms are both n minus 1, it's an upper bound because n minus 1 
clearly is a higher value, which would take more time, which therefore has a higher time complexity. So with that being said, we are going to make the assumption that t of n equals 2t of n minus 1. And we will take, uh, add some additional constant for adding and subtracting constant number of times. So this is our base recurrence. But we need to solve for t of n minus 1. So let's go ahead and say t of n minus 1 is the same thing as um, 2 t of n minus 1 minus 1 plus c. So I took n minus 1 here and I plugged it into the original and I solved. So this is the same thing as 2t n minus 2 plus c and we need to take this and plug it in to where n minus 1 is. So this is the same thing as 2 multiplied by the quantity 2t n minus 2 plus c plus c. So now we need to solve for n minus 2, t of n minus 2. But one thing I like to do is do this simplification process uh, while I'm doing my solution derivation. So this is obviously the same as 2 squared t n minus 2 because I'm expanding this out. So this would be 2 squared t n minus 2 plus 2c plus c. And let's just go ahead and actually write this as 3c. And now let's solve for t of n minus 2, which is the same thing as 2t of n minus 2 minus 1 plus c, which is 2t n minus 3 plus c. And we will go ahead and plug this in. So we will say this is the same thing as 2 squared multiplied by the quantity 2t n minus 3 plus c plus 3c. And we can simplify that even further to be 2 cubed t n minus 3. And uh, 4 times c is 4c plus 3c is 7c. So now you kind of see we're generating this pattern. So when k equals 1, we get this, um, this base case here. But then we come in here when k equals 2, and we get you know this uh, derivation. And then k equals 3, we get this value. So let's try to analyze uh, if we can come up with a pattern or not. So looking when k equals 1, the exponent here, there is none. So it would be 1. But then when k equals 2, the exponent here is 2. And when k equals 3, the exponent here is 3. So we could probably generalize this formula to be t of n equals 2 to some value k. So that's what we have so far. But now we have this t of n minus 1 when k equals 1. We have uh, t of n minus 2 when k is 2. And we have t of n minus 3 when k is 3. So we could probably generalize this to be t of n minus k. In each consecutive formula, we are adding some constant. That constant is multiplied by a value. So here in k equals 1, it's just c. When k equals 2, it's 3c. When k equals 3, it's 7c. So we know that we're adding an additional thing. But what exactly are we adding by a factor of? Well, it looks like the constant is multiplied by a constant factor of 2 to the k minus 1. So I can say plus 2 to the k minus 1 times c. So when k is 3, 2 to the 3 is 8, minus 1 is 7, and then 7 times c is 7c. So now we need to solve the time complexity here. So let's kind of make our way over to this space over here. We know that uh, the base case t of 0 is 1. And if we're going to recursively get these subproblems all the way to the base case, we can assume that n minus k equals 0, which clearly implies that n equals k. So I should be able to take any value of k and substitute it for n and uh, be able to solve my equation a little bit easier. 
So I'm going to say t of n equals 2 to the n. And we know to derive that 0, we can just plug in t of 0 plus, and then we have 2 to the n minus 1 times c. So let's see if we can break this down a little bit further. Breaking this down further, we know that t of 0 is 1. And we know that uh, we just need to expand these out. So this becomes 2 to the n plus 2 to the n c minus c. Looking at the upper bound in big O notation, we know that the largest value excluding constants is 2 to the n. So in a non-memoized Fibonacci sequence, we can assume uh, here from our equation that the time complexity is indeed 2 to the n. And this is a very well-known time complexity, and that is indeed the solution, 2 to the n. It is an exponential algorithm using a recursive strategy. Let's look at another problem. Another really good problem is merge sort. Merge sort is interesting because it attempts to solve a bunch of subproblems from an original problem. So what I mean by that is let's assume that we have some array, some one dimensional array. And this array has n elements. The way that we solve this using something like divide and conquer to get the recurrence relation is we split it up into two ways. We have an n over two and an n over two, and when they're combined, they make up n. And we have two of these. So we do this all the way down for each recursive subproblem until we get some, uh, hit some base case. Once we hit some base case, we start going up and we start combining values until we get our solution. And this is commonly used for sorting integers in a, an array or things like that. So now what we need to do is we need to understand how to derive um, a recurrence for this. So looking at what I just solved, we can easily compute the recurrence to be t of n equals, and because we split up two portions of n over 2, we can say 2 t of n over 2 subproblems. And then since we're merging back up, uh, we have some n c amount of uh, merges uh, that we need to do to recurse back up to find our final solution. So to keep this simpler, I'm just going to do n, and we can solve our uh, recurrence this way. So once again, let's split this up into two columns. We have our work, and we have our solution space and we can take the original here. So we know that when k equals 1, we have the original t of n equals 2t, n over 2 plus n. And substituting n over 2 into the original, we see t of n over 2 equals 2t, n divided by 4, plus n over 2. We'll then plug this back in t of n equals 2 times the quantity 2t, n over 4, plus n over 2, plus n. We can further simplify this to be 2 squared t, n over 4, plus 2n, and then solve for n over 4. We know t of n over 4 is the same thing as 2t of, and we have n over 8 plus n over 4. Plugging this back in, we have 2 squared times the quantity, 2t of n over 8 plus n over 4 plus 2n. Spanning this out, we have 2 cubed t n over 8 plus, this is 4, so this would be n, so n plus 2n is 3n, so 3n. Let's now see if we can define a formula. We have 
t of n equals, and for each k value here we have k equals 1, here we have k equals 2, and k equals 3, just to highlight this a little better. So for each consecutive value of k, we see that we are raising to an exponent. Here there is no exponent, here there's a 2 for when k is 2, and here there's a 3 when k is 3. So similar to the last problem, we can assume that we are at some 2 to the k. We have our recurrence in here, t. Each consecutive value of k, there's an n on the numerator. But we're dividing here by a 2. And then we're dividing by a 4. And then we're dividing by an 8. So to me, when I'm looking at this, when k is 1, if I did 2 to the k, that would be 2. And k is 2, and I did 2 to the 2, that would be 4. 2 to the 3 is 8. So this looks like 2 to the k. I am, then, I am then adding an additional 1 for every value of k on the constant. So when we have n on k equals 1, that's just 1 times n. When k is 2, we have 2 times n. When k is 3, we have 3 times n. So we can simply say kn. Our base case for a merge sort here is going to be t of 1 equals 1. And ideally, I want to recurse to the base case, or else I'm going to have a never-ending algorithm. So I can say n divided by 2 to the k equals 1. Cross-multiplying these values, I have n equals 2 to the k. And solving this using common logarithmic properties, I can say k equals log base 2 of n. If k is log base 2 of n, I can come back to the original formula and start plugging in values. I'll represent the final solution in pink. We have t of n equals 2 to the log 2 of n. We used t of 1 here, which is just 1, t of 1. And then we added some k. But we know k is um, just log n here. So I'm going to add log 2 of n. And we multiply by some value of n. Looking up over here at this solution, you may be wondering how we simplify this. But there is a common property in logs that when we raise a value to a logarithm, we can essentially replace this n and this 2. So this becomes n to the log 2 of 2. Log 2 of 2 is simply 1, so this becomes n to the 1. t of 1 is also 1. And we're adding n log n. When we're analyzing time complexities in big O notation, we look at the largest value and discard all uh, constants. So clearly, the largest value with all constants discarded is n log n. If you look up any time complexities for a merge sort, you will indeed see that the time complexity is n log n. And that is how we derive it here. So that's it for solving recurrence relations using the substitution method. If you have any questions or need any further help, please shoot me a message or leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.